How's Judith? Neil, how nice to see you. Have you hitchhiked all the way home just to see me? How are you? I'm fine. I know you're fine. Otherwise, you'd have walked to the door moaning. Doesn't change much, the old place. Well, in a week. Well, it looks different at first glance. Though that would be the squalor I'm living in at Kiel. It's quite a nice place, I thought. Quite a nice girl, Judith. Two of the most deprecating words in the English language when used by you. Quite and nice. Have you shaved today? No, mm. neither of you. <laughs> and if that bag is full of washing, I've only one thing to say to you. Mm? You know how the machine works. You know how the kettle works. You don't mean that. You mean, do I know what to do to make it work? Oh, it is so nice to have you home again. I simply hated all that peace and quiet. And as for how it works, we'll skip the physics lesson. You wouldn't understand. Your grandfather always said, beware of educated men. They never talk to you. They've forgotten how. Ah, difficult. I've come home especially to talk to you. Oh, that's new. Now who isn't defining their terms? It's two years old. New to this room. There was a picture of who? Your father. Remember him? So I've usurped his position at last. Not a chance in hell, shrimp. To mean it. A bit touchy today, aren't we? How is the old codger? Oh, he's cold, I should think. He's in Aberdeen. I know. Back tomorrow. Just in time for me to spill the beans about you. If necessary. Then you'll just skip, I suppose. That's right. So, did you go and see a doctor? No, of course you didn't. Well, all cut and dried then. What time will he be back? About ten, he said. Will you be up by then? Doubt it. Send him up to my room, will you? Okay. You don't seem very worried. Darling, if you think there's anything that you can tell him that I can't wipe out like that, then you don't know either of us. Silly. Got off on the wrong foot. Nerves, you see. Came home knowing I was fighting a losing battle. So you puffed out your chest and stamped your feet. You're not a shrimp. You're a frog. Look, I'm not doing it for the sake of it, you know. And that justifies blackmail. I'm trying to apologize. The word you want is sorry. Why not go straight to it? Have you ever seen anyone having a fit before? It's quite frightening. And for me, it was a joyride. Look. If I do go to a doctor, what can he do? Hmm? He'll send me for the great British institution, the test, and then another test. Then the first test will go wrong, and I'll go back, and they will get it right, and eventually, because, because they always do, they will find something wrong with me. Middle-aged women do not suddenly throw fits on the train for no reason. S singular fit, one fit. Just one, hmm? you promise? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other signs that you're falling apart? Oh, I can't drink as much as I used to. Shouldn't the old man know about it just the same? Oh, he'd be less able to cope with it than you. No, Neil, you mustn't treat me like a fool. Would I ever? Well, if I think there's something wrong, I will do something about it. I don't want to be ill. But there's an unpleasant streak in the family. Mind over matter brigade. Your father's to blame. Only got a pain in the neck because you think you've got a pain in the neck. Mental acupuncture. Transfer your pain to someone else's neck. <laughs> I do it all the time. The number of people who say, Neil, you've become an absolute I'm ahead pain. of you. I felt sure I'd have no difficulty with you. You know, I thought we'd be sitting in a waiting room by now. You see, I even have the name of a specialist. Mr. Michael Pearson, with all the letters in the alphabet after his name, in any combination you wish. He sounds ancient and reliable. The Lagonda of neurologists. Mm. We'll be needing I'd that. Then. I haven't quite finished with you. 
Oh, look, I don't believe you'd upset me or your father for the world. Or Jilly. She's having her stitch cut on Monday. Guy Fawkes Day. Yeah. A very suitable occasion for you to become an uncle. Mr. Happenwhite really knew what he was doing when he made a chair. Oh, what about his tables, though? This one could do with a piece cut out, like so. <laughs> anyway, you're looking marvellous, darling. I'm feeling terrible. Well, it'll all be over by tomorrow night, sweetie. I've got a feeling I'm going to be stuck like this for the rest of my life, leaning back at an angle of 70 degrees and watching the rest of me sag. Mm, I know how you feel. And to make matters worse, every other pregnant girl you see looks as if she's got a ping-pong ball tucked in her knickers. <laughs> it's an unfair <laughs> world, Jenny. But tomorrow night will Thank be you. the happiest night of your life, I promise you. You try not to miss it. <laughs> miss what? That was nice of you to join us. Sleep all right, did we? You still haven't shaved. Oh, for heaven's sake. Jilly, how are we both? Could I have a spoon, oh, please, darling? Ah, uh, now, where's Nick? Late turn. You know, work, Neil. W-E-R-C-K. Uh, you must have read about it somewhere. You know, I've had a great deal of sympathy at college. Sister married to the fuzz, they rained flowers on me. They still don't see me as fully human, though. Of course, I told them he was thinking of chucking it in, going to sail around the world in an upturned panda. When you left school, you should have donated your sense of humour to the sixth form, where it belongs. I used to like you. You always knew where I buried the tortoise. Where did you? <laughs> Now I realise you are quite unworthy of such a confidence. Oh, uh, well. What are you going to call my niece? Nephew. Oh, don't start that again, darling. We did the test on her, mm. Mum, didn't what? we, Jimmy? What test? The string with a ring on it over the baby. If it turns clockwise, a boy. It didn't. Which only goes to prove the theory that the female sex is contrary even before birth. Mm. So, what are you going to call her? No idea. Of course she has, only it's so dreadful it has to be written down. Dear Mum and Dad, Mr. and Mrs. Nick Puxley are pleased to announce the arrival of Pixie Puxley. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. well, if it is a boy, she could always call him Michael, couldn't she, Mum? Did ordinary, dear. Oh, I know some very clever Michaels. Didn't you know a doctor once, Michael somebody or other? <coughs> I'm Neil. Go out a bottle of wine, will you? What mark, sir? Well, you choose. You're good at that. Mm, thank she isn't very well, you know. Mm. What's the trouble, darling? Nothing. What did he say? Oh, you know what he's like. The well, tongue goes into fourth gear while his brain's in neutral. You sure? Huh? Hmm? You don't look too chirpy, Mum, come to think of it. Well, that'll be worrying about you, won't it? I mean, tomorrow night I shall probably have a sympathetic contraction. <laughs> Oh, Malcolm, what are you staring at? Uh, the, the other night at dinner with Jack and what's Angela. name? Angela. Well, they went on and on at me. Are you all right? Are you all right? Are you all right? Who's Michael? Well, you asked Neil. He invented him. Look, the other night, I did have a headache, and I made the mistake of telling him. A headache? Is mm. that all? You see what you've done? Look, it shouldn't tempt fate, dear. Yeah. <laughs> All I said was, look, she's ill, you said, and then you swept out of the room. I mean, it could have meant anything. Going on a bit, aren't you? Yeah. But as with everything you say, we had to divide it by ten uh, to, to allow for your exaggeration. Uh, whereupon we are simply find that she had a, a headache. Isn't that ill? Look, will you just stop trying to create an effect all the time? Well, I, I don't think he meant any harm by it. Yes, well, um, Perhaps not. Hmm. It's only because he's left home. Yeah. Oh, he thinks we don't love him anymore. Not that we ever did, of course, in the first place. So, to keep himself firmly in our minds, he throws a little something for us all to worry about. See, it's as simple as that. Tell you what, Jilly, when Jack Bowles cuts Pixie's umbilical cord tomorrow, ask him if he'd do mine. Pleasure. Your father's right, Neil. You shouldn't worry us. Especially Jilly. She's got enough on her mind. Oh, so that's where mine's been all these years. No wonder I couldn't find it. Oh, yeah. Neil, um, are you going to drink all that wine yourself? Hmm? 
was a bit naughty. Yeah, well, I'm still a kid, aren't I? Julie gone? Yes, your father took her. I meant to wish her luck. Go see her tomorrow. She had a point, you know. Huh? About you breaking the link with home. It's not easy for you. <laughs> hey, is that funny? I should have chopped her off of the knees there and then for having such a condescending opinion of me. Oh, why didn't you? Yeah, well, I didn't mean to upset her. Or him. No, just me. If that's what it takes, yes. All right, Neil. What do you think is wrong with me? <laughs> I don't know. You must have some vague idea, otherwise you wouldn't be so anxious. No, truly, I haven't. Uh, I don't believe that. If I had a bruise on my arm or a toothache, he wouldn't give a damn. The cause would be obvious, but a fit? Hmm. Frightening, as you said. Especially for me. So, uh, shall we all pretend it never happened? Well, I mean, it's reached the committee stage already, hasn't it? Jilly and Dad both shouted me down, so all you have to do is to employ the great British skill of wiping it out of your mind. I suppose we all need a filter. Stop ourselves going mad. But you know, there are people walking around with cancer. They know they've got it. They know it'll kill them if it goes untreated. But they refuse to do anything about it. Because until someone in a white coat names this lump cancer, it does not exist. Who's more scared? You or me? I know something is wrong. That ever since I was knee high, we've had this thing, you and I, where we live each other's best and worst moments. This romantic wish, Neil, there's no truth to it. Look, it's worked time and time again. Now, you admit it on occasion. You even love it when it suits. Right now, it doesn't suit. I understand from my receptionist that you were rather rude. I'm afraid I was. It won't do, you know. It won't do at all. She's been with me over ten years. Can you imagine that? Well, it certainly is a long time to hold down a job. <laughs> you wanted to see me urgently, Mr... Um... Uh, Laurie. Yet you come with no letter from your GP, no introduction from a colleague. Most cavalier. I can't pay you, Mr Pearson. Good heavens, I should think so. I shall be with you in one moment. Well, it's good of you to see me. The options were self-sorting. See you or have you screamed the building down? How old are you? Twenty. I observe that you are a very self-possessed young man. A spoilt brat is, of course, the vernacular. No, I didn't come for analysis, the doctor. No, but you must allow me a certain pleasure in seeing you. What do you do for a living? I don't. I'm at Keele University. Bless my soul. They shoot up universities everywhere. My opinion, which you are rather forced to listen to, are you not, is that all but a few should be pulled down. I swear I learnt nothing but cunning at university. <laughs> Postals for the overprivileged. What do you learn? History. <laughs> How immensely useful that will be to you. And uh, why have you come to me? Is your home in Oxford? Yes. Well, to put it simply, I was on a train last week and I had a fit. What sort of a fit? What kinds are there? I presume you mean a, a convulsion, an epileptiform fit? Yes. Uh, one minute I was sitting down, the next I was writhing around on the floor, foaming at the mouth. Did you hurt yourself falling? No. Uh, I thrashed around a good deal, you know, arms and legs. Oh, I grunted at the exhalation of each breath. How? Oh, do it for me. <laughs> oh. 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 Very good.
How did you feel afterwards? As if someone pulled the plug out. Drowsy? Yes. Had you been drinking? Coffee. Oh, it was daylight. We were in a tunnel. We? Who are we? Uh, the, the people on the train. Uh, there were lights on the wall of the tunnel. They hooked my attention as they flashed by. Have you ever had a fit before? No. Giddies, blackouts, fainting? Not that I can remember. Now, you say, one moment you were sitting in a seat, and the next you were writhing around on the floor. You had no warning that this was going to hit you. None that I can remember. And I suppose you, uh, you went unconscious? Most people do. Yes, I did. Would you be kind enough to strip down to the waist for me, Mr. Uh, Lorry? Yeah, but I only came to ask what was wrong. And I hope to be able to tell you. Relax. Now then, <clears throat> breathe in for me. Breathe out. In. Out. In. I was uh, wondering whether there was uh, anything to worry about. Yes. Well, just uh, push against my hands for me, would you? Push hard. That's it. That's it. That'll do. Now, you see this white line? I'd like you to walk along it heel to toe for me. Uh, it was pretty frightening, I can tell you. Oh, yes, I'm sure. That'll do. Now then, just uh, close your eyes and stand perfectly still for one moment. Good. Now come and sit on the couch. Cross your legs, would you? Uh, physically, I seem to be OK. I mean, nothing seems to bother me much. Any exams on the horizon? Not yet. Any other reason why you should feel pressured? No, actually, life's pretty great at the moment. It really is. Hey, I was wondering, you know, well, uh, I mean, it seems pretty daft, really. You might as well get your money's worth. Yeah. Keep your eyes open. Was there anybody in that compartment with you? No. Nobody helped you? No. I despair of my fellow man sometimes, I really do. Well, actually, uh, my fellow man didn't get much of a chance. I mean, the train was pretty empty. Mm. Uh, would you just close your eyes and with your left forefinger touch the tip of your nose? With your left forefinger? Oh, sorry. Good. Now with your right forefinger? Good. Now tell me where I touch you. Uh, left shoulder. Right shoulder. Right arm. Chest. Good. Now I've got a pin here. Tell me when I prick you. Keep your eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Oh! What was that for? So sorry. Do get dressed, Mr. Larry. Well, what could it have been? My dear young man, I do hope you haven't employed the adage, strike me dead if I tell a lie. No, of course you haven't, otherwise you'd be lying dead at my feet. Would I? If there were any justice, yes. Why did you come to see me? I had a fit on the train. You did not. You described the fit in precise details. And yet, you say, you were unconscious. You were alone in the compartment, you say. I conclude there was no one to describe to you what happened afterwards. I came for a checkup, mate, not a quizzing. But I do believe there was someone with you, on whose behalf you've come to see me today. Someone dear to you, someone afraid to come themselves. Someone older than yourself, uh, middle-aged. That's when it's most likely to occur. My mother. Well, you're not the first young man to stand in, as it were, for a friend. Though I must confess that such concern appears to be on the decline. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. So, all these things happened to your mother. What could it be? I've no idea. Many possibilities. 
Most of them so trivial that both she and you would be amazed. How do I get her to come down here? Go home. Tell her what you've just done. I doubt she'll be unmoved. <laughs> she'll be putty in your hands. <laughs> Meanwhile, you'll be delighted to know that you are in excellent shape. Thanks. Uh, to whom shall I send my bill? Uh, me? Uh, Malcolm, Laurie. The old forge. Denton. go now? Oh, I'll have to, to save your face. <laughs> trivial, he said. S most of them so trivial that both she and you would be amazed. Oh, well, there's hardly any point in bothering him, then. Oh, no, oh, I'm on, only right. teasing you. I will go, I promise. If you'll still promise. Not to tell my father. Mm. Right. <laughs> no idea you were that worried. Yeah, well, I'm not now. No, it's nice to be the object of so much concern. He sounds nice. He's what you always dreamed of, the perfect gentleman. Mm. Does he shave? Now, Jilly, you're aware of what's going to happen, aren't you? And as a consequence, what might happen. You listening to me? Yes. Good. I'd rather not talk to thin air. Where was I? What's going to happen, and as a consequence. Right. Now, I'm going to go in there and cut the stitch. Now, I've shown you what that's like. Once around the old cervix, rather like a purse string, holding it all together. Imagine, if you will, the downpipe at the point it joins the gutter. <laughs> I understand you perfectly, Jack. <laughs> Mr. Burrows in here, I think. I understand perfectly, eh? Well, let's cut it and see. See what? See if the old muscles dust you a damn great sigh of relief and heads appear. I hope so. For a start, it'll get your blasted father off my back. Every time I look round, there he is, checking up on me. Well, how do you think I feel? I've had it for nine months. Yes, but you're his daughter. I mean, heaven help you, but you are. I'm a highly qualified gynaecologist. I don't rate blanket surveillance. Is he still out there? Oh, no. I scotched that. He's in my office. Against his will, mind you, working his way through my sherry. I mean, do I look over his shoulder when he's doing my income tax, do I? Dare you. Oh, you've heard. Oh, Jack. Oh, Mr. Burris. That's all right. What are the chances of it all happening today? 50-50. But if I'm wrong, don't hold it against me. <laughs> 